Traveler is a sci-fi tabletop RPG first published in 1977, originally created by Mark W. Miller along with Frank Chadwick, John Harshman, and Lauren Wiseman. The game publisher Mongoose rebooted it in 2008 and published a second edition in 2016. The game is grounded in slightly more realism than the average sci-fi RPG, although you still have aliens and faster than light travel. There is also an element of psionics in the game, where characters could possibly have access to telekinetic, telepathic, and other mind-based powers, but those are rare. The game itself presents a wide open galaxy with respect to what kind of game you want to run at the table. The galaxy can be divided into civilizations ranging from tech level 0, primitive, to tech level 15, and even higher. Forgotten or abandoned planets can slip on the TL spectrum. The Traveler game has grown and evolved quite expansively since its inception in 1977 as a generic sci-fi RPG. By the time Mongoose's second edition was published, which is what this review is covering, there emerged a distinct setting, the Third Imperium. The Third Imperium is a human-ruled interstellar empire, ruling known space at the local level through a feudal union of planetary lords. However, there is a detailed chapter in this book on how to build your own galaxy by sector, trade route, all the way down to individual planet atmosphere types, hydrographic profiles, population density, government types, and so on. The game breaks down all planetary characteristics into a single hexadecimal expression, so that with a single line of letters and numbers, you can describe an entire planet from top to bottom. This is handy for randomizing or using pre-made planets. You are a traveler. The game goes out of its way to make you really think about how you came to be a traveler. Your career starts at age 18, at which time you determine if you either make it into university, enter military academy, get drafted as a grunt, or even do a spell in prison. The dice are rolled throughout this character creation process, determining how well you do in your career path, whether you make great connections or if you flunk out of university, etc. You decide whether to keep trying to enroll in further studies or service, but incur age penalties after your fourth career term. Eventually, you resolve your pension and medical debt, choose skills with your other travelers at the table, and then after half a lifetime of study and or military service, your adventure starts. Here are the most pertinent aspects of the character sheet. Your species. You can be one of several human splinter species, and the book presents two other super species, the lion-like Aslan and the wolf-like Varger. Of course, since this game is decades in the running, there are other, many other established species in the setting, but they are not on offer in this core rulebook. Your characteristics. The core stats in Traveler are strength, dexterity, endurance, intellect, education, and social. They are identical or very close analogs to the traditional six core stats from D&D, although education and social tend to occur in a more advanced civilization and work slightly differently, although intuitively. Skills. These are the engine of your character's actions in-game. There are 39 listed skills in the book, each of them detailed in terms of when they might apply. Your list of skills is determined in part by your career path and in part by conscious choice. Study period. This is a mechanic that deals with how you level up as well as pick up new skills. You must dedicate at least one two-month unit of study towards a skill as well as pass an education check. You spend these two-month study units towards existing and new skills. Finances. You'll find this mechanic a lot in sci-fi RPGs. It's basically a lever that the GM can use on players to motivate them towards a task or set of tasks to get a story moving. It's basically debt for your character, and as in real life, debt can come from anywhere. In Traveler, you can incur debt from your education, medical care, but most significantly the financing of your starship. Weapons, augments, and equipment. Each of these items carry dice modifications and other tags that affect checks. This version of Traveler uses a simple d6 dice pool to determine how a check shakes out. By default, the player will be rolling 2d6 for a check but with modifiers, could be rolling more dice to increase the chance of success. A success is measured by adding up the sum of all dice values rolled, and comparing against the challenge. If it is a specific challenge, such as Strength 10, the value on all your d6s that you're allowed to roll for a Strength check need to meet or exceed 10. Tasks are also generally set at 8 in terms of difficulty, but some are easier and some are harder. 
The margin of success or failure should also play a role in the outcome as well. So for example, failing a check by six or more on your dice should result in exceptional failure, where anything that could go wrong does go wrong. Getting a surplus of six or more over the target should add flourish, style, and benefits to the character in that situation. At the start of combat, you roll initiative based on your dex or int, whichever is higher. The logical modifiers such as surprise and terrain effects also apply here. Each player within a round can either 1. perform one significant action and one minor action, or 2. perform three minor actions. They have unlimited reactions and any reasonable number of free actions. A successful attack roll leads to a damage roll. Weapons do the amount of damage listed by the number of dice. Damage is applied to a target's endurance score, then it depletes either their strength or dex scores. Once either of those reach zero, the target is unconscious. With all three at zero, the target is dead. Weapons have tags like armor piercing, stun, scope, bulky, zero G, each imparting special mechanical characteristics. Healing comes in the form of surgery, field medicine, or slower natural healing. Characters can encounter many non-combat dangers of space, such as disease, falling, poison, extremes in gravity, extremes in temperature, exposure to vacuum, extreme weather, and dreaded exposure to radiation. The book goes to extremes detailing how an animal or beast is statted in terms of its size, fight or flight rating, traits, skills, behavior, and speed. There is a very fun series of D66 tables that allows a GM to generate NPCs as well as random patrons and missions. There are also encounter tables divided by their location such as starport, a rural area, or an urban area. The granular detail of the gear in Traveler fits with the detail-oriented theme of the game, but not outside of reasonability. Armor types have a protection rating, tech level, radiation protection rating, weight, cost, and required skill. You also have access to a variety of bodily augmentations, such as integrated neural communications, endurance enhancers, and things like enhanced vision and the like. These will lend extra dice towards different related checks. There are a handful of communication devices rated at different tech levels, as well as computers that can be purchased. Software varies by tech level, which increases its effectiveness. Additionally, there is a family of medical devices to choose from, and of sensors and high-tech survival gear. Weapons range from melee to projectile to energy-based. Then you have grenades, heavy weaponry, general explosives, and weapon mods. Vehicles in Traveler are wonderfully thought out and detailed. They can, of course, have very powerful weapons mounted to them, depending on your access to tech level, as well as very versatile systems such as aquatic locomotion, autopilot, life support, and the like. But everything costs money in the game of Traveler, including, and especially, your ship. Your crew's starship is almost invariably owned by a bank at the start of any Traveler's campaign. One of the background goals of your crew is to pay down the millions in debt owed towards the ship. This gets even hairier since you are expected to pay maintenance costs on the various ship systems each month, as well as crew salaries, berthing costs at starports, fuel costs, and repairs. If you skip on repairs, you roll on a system's failure table and suffer the consequences. You do actually get to have fun, though, when you roll on the Space Encounters table, which pits your ship against any of dozens of different obstacles or challenges in space. There are several ways to travel quickly through space in Traveler, but only one method is covered in the core book, and that is by jumps. A jump requires a number of crew actions, namely astrogation checks, diverting power to the jump drive, and an engineering check. The strange hyperspace bubble that is then created traps the ship and its crew for a week before it arrives at its destination, which is a peculiar feature of FTL travel in this game. Game mechanics are also included for other aspects of ship operations, such as handling extra passengers, repairs, sensors, ship computers, and the various types of locking mechanisms, as well as security measures. If the specificity in this department is still not enough for you, you can pick up another Traveler supplement called High Guard for more on Starship operations. There are 17 ship templates in the book, each offering a full rundown of ship tonnage, maintenance, and purchase costs, crew type, along with a gridded isometric floor plan. You can tell by these pages that the heart and soul of a game of Traveler is centered around your ship, even if you find yourself disembarking from time to time. Ship-to-ship -ship combat goes as follows. 
All ships first complete the maneuver step, which is based on their ship's thrust rating. Then each ship completes an attack step, which includes possible boarding of ships. Finally, each ship completes an action step, which includes things like repairs, retreat, or other non-attack actions. Players each assume a crew duty, such as captain, pilot, engineer, sensor operator, or gunner. They get to do something job-related in the action step of each round. For example, a captain can perform a leadership check to improve the ship's initiative, or an engineer can roll an engineer check to push the ship's power production by a certain amount, risking, of course, critical systems failure. There is a hard-to-get and expensive-to-use set of powers available to players called psionics. With enough psi points, a character can pull off things like clairvoyance, telekinesis, telepathy, and teleportation. Each of these named talents contains 5 to 10 specific abilities which act sort of like spells in a fantasy RPG. This mechanic is hard for characters to attain, which is surely meant to make it all the more dazzling when it does show up at the table. Since the game emphasizes the mechanic of debt and cost and mortgages so much, it only makes sense that it offers players the opportunity to make money. Characters earn money principally through freight shipping, taking on passengers, and speculative trade, or buying low and selling high. There are a great number of mechanics and tables for each of these methods of making money. The speculative trade section, for example, has these steps laid out at the start. Which is to say that the trade minigame in Traveler asks the players to get pretty involved. Traveler feels like a heavy game mostly because it has been around for so long and has gone through so many iterations that it has picked up layers and layers of ideas. But this core rulebook is matter-of-factly about the fact that its own official settings, the Third Imperium or 2300 AD, are completely optional and that many Traveler adherents use settings from other games. The book is nice enough to include a very detailed subsector from the Third Imperium, filled with a brain-melting amount of detail about the planets and civilization contained therein, but you can take it or leave it. The most important aspect of Traveler is your ship and your crewmates. The game doesn't even start until every player has developed the first third or half of the character's adult life, at the table, together. That is, all crew characters are meant to be engineered to complement each other. And your ship may not be paid off and fully yours for a while, but your ship is your crew's home, and it's how you make money to survive. If the spirit of that idea remains alive at your table, then you will have grasped at the essence of a game that is otherwise so expansive and complex that you'd be lost in space. Links for everything are below. Thanks for watching and listening. This is Dave, signing off. See ya.